So here again guys, and this one is going to be on uh, velocity limiting. So just to show you how this thing is going to look at the end, you see uh, there is this area here which uh, has the velocities limited and all, everywhere else, yeah, they just run around like they should be. So um, it was just a question that uh, arose like a couple of days ago. I was, uh, I needed to do something, you know, that, that limits velocities that are too much at some places and stuff like that, you know. It is a good thing to, to be able to do it, it's like if you have too big of a splash somewhere, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to start with a simple solution and um, we're going to progress towards like using our custom data channels, stuff like that. So it should be a nice exercise in Nell and um, custom field channels, uh, of course, you can, which you can use, of course, for um, a lot of other stuff. So uh, the basic way to do it would be with an expression and it's kind of the foundation of the thing. So I want to take the velocity channel of the field and I want to clamp it. So to do, to do this, I can use the field nail channel. So what the field nail channel is doing is that it takes the uh, data channel, takes the channel on the field shape, and it is, it is allowing you to put to you know to do some operation. So let's say we get the velocity channel, which is a vector, and I have an expression here. So let's think about the expression a bit. Now, usually um, the way to limit stuff is uh, as simple as just having a minimum of that stuff, like, um, and the, um, the limit. So let's say three is my limit. So now this would usually give you um, like either the, uh, the, like the real velocity or it would give you three if actually this velocity is above three. Now the problem with this is that um, the velocity, the components of the velocity and uh, now is going to replace that thing with the right components when you just um, switch it over to the, the, to the other components here uh, for different axes. So the problem with this is that the velocity also is going to be going below zero. So if I go below zero then of course this is not going to work. So then uh, to make this work we need to get uh, actually to do it in a bit different way. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the magnitude of the velocity. So it's pretty much the size of the vector. This is the speed. Um, so this is only the scalar part without the vector part of the velocity. And I'm going to say if the magnitude of that velocity is above our threshold, like let's say three, then uh, if it is, then I will just uh, output three, but if it isn't, then I would um, actually yeah. If it is, I would I would have to output. Um, I would have to output actually the the uh, velocity times three, but the, the normalized velocity. Normalized velocity time three. Uh, otherwise, I could just output the velocity. This is the if it's lower than three, I don't need to do any clamping. So the reason I am doing this is because I need to preserve the original direction direction of the vector, which is the normalized velocity, the original one, and I uh, multiplying it by the uh, you know the speed limit because this is the velocity that I'm going to be um, enforcing, like applying if it is about the speed limit. So let's just copy this. And when you apply it to all the components, uh, and if I go into particle scope, I'm going to see that white water speed is like three. Let's make it four. So now when I reset and I sim again, I shouldn't be getting any of my particles getting into the light stage. You see they accelerate, but you see that they get bright. And yeah, just some of it gets white. It's because, you know, you, you put your uh, data on the field, then it gets put on the particles, like let's see here. 
Okay, so the shape particle, velocity. You see that I do have some uh, above three, but that's just because of the interplay between the field and the, and the particles. But it's still, you know, it's not much above, and you don't want to do hard counting in it. So if you go into the field, you can see in the field velocity, the maximum is uh, pretty much, you know, there is no, at least there is no component that is above three. So it does work. Um, just continue. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, it is a bit clunky to um, direct. You know, it is uh, it's kind of awkward um, just doing this here, and you know, with this number here, it would be better if you could. Uh, I thought it would be better if I could actually put a custom data channel on this, which is going to be giving me uh, the speed limit. And then, uh, and, and then I would be able to, you know, mask it and do all these kind of different things with it. So, uh, to do that now, to like write a custom data channel to the thing, which is going to be the speed limit, uh, I will use the field channel. So the field channel is something that is creating a new data channel. Okay, so now I'm going to just copy the expression here. I'm going to delete this. Actually, no, I'm not going to delete it. Um, just space out my block. Usually I zigzag them to be able to see the bodies on the lines. Okay, so the field channel is, can uh, create a new channel and I can say to the new channel this is going to be speed limit. So this channel is going to be float and over here I can um, go to the value action. So value action is just uh, kind of the flag that is saying is this getting um, evaluated or not. So if it is at 1, it is setting stuff to a, to a value. So since it's just a scalar, we can put only the first one. So let's put it like even lower, like let's put it to at S2. And then um, I'm going to have a new data channel called speed, speed limit float type, and it's going to be uh, set uh, at 2. Then that field nail channel here can, instead of um, using just a 3, can use dot speed limit, which is nice. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Okay, so I'm just going to name this like speed limit apply. This is going to be applying the speed limit, and this is going to be just initializing. Okay, so let's reset. Save first. Let's reset and see what happens. So now I should be having my velocity limited at 2. And I think this works also. Let's see. It does work. You see, I don't even have like the, the brighter whitish stuff now. Okay, so this is nice. You know, we can uh, get to the place. Uh, uh, it, is, it is comfortable. So. Uh, I have a place which uh, which assigns that speed channel. You know, I have a place that applies it. You know, I can write different stuff here and so on and so on. Uh, now the next thing I want to, to do is to be able to mask it uh, because obviously I don't want to limit the speed everywhere. I just want to limit it where um, you know there is a certain situation arises. So uh, just to be to show it in a simplest possible way, I'm going to create a sphere just as I had before. And there is a distance, just uh, like a sphere um, distance field. So I'm just going to show this and place it there. And just what I had in the that I showed you before when we were starting. So I want to mask it with this um, with this sphere. Let me get some space. 
Okay, so um, wanting to mask it with this sphere, of course, uh, the idea is that I, will, I would want to be able to mask it with different objects and at different uh, values. So at the sphere, I would, would like, for example, like one value, and uh, at another object, I would like another value. So to be able to do this, I would need several of these um, speed limit channels. So, uh, like assignments of channels. So, the NAT is made like cleverly with this thing in mind. So, so what I can do is that I can um, have the value action here at zero. Oops, sorry. So, have the value action here at zero. So, this guy is not ever gonna evaluate. So, it is really just gonna initialize. And it's gonna initialize to like a lot. Practically, like if it is. 1000, obviously, uh, like 10,000, it's gonna be initialized to no speed limit. And then, um, at the sphere, I would write um, some data into it, like I would write, for example, here, I would set it to 2, or actually even to 1, let's say, but I would set it only inside the sphere. Now, the cool thing is that when you do it like this, you have a mask. When you do it with the, with, the, with the channel, you have a mask here. You see that on just the expression, you don't have a mask yourself. Um, or maybe, you know, it just makes you do it in a smarter way. So here you have a mask, so I can mask this actually. I can mask the assignment of, um, of uh, one at this channel uh, to this guy. So, yeah, we don't need to show that here. So, um, this is going to be speed limit sphere. So I have a distance field there, and I just need a mask. So the field mask node takes a distance field and makes a mask from it uh, in whatever way you can say here. Like let's say, put some like softness there. I will close, I'm not show sure this because I don't need it. So now if I Simulate. Do some stepping. Let's see now what's going to happen. So what now I'm doing is that I'm um, creating no uh, no limiting in the beginning at all. Then here I'm writing only on the in the volume of the sphere, which is like the default setting of the mask. I'm writing. Uh, speed limit of one into that channel. And then here I'm just applying whatever speed limit, you know, is written down there into the, uh, on the velocity, which is a very flexible, I think, approach. Let's just drop this white water speed. And you can see when as it goes here, like when this stuff goes into the sphere, it's going to get slower. Or it goes above. Let's show. It. So now you're going to see that when it falls down, like yeah, here, when it got to the boundary, even it started slowing. Obviously, this is an extreme case, you know, but it's just to show you, you know in a very obvious situation. And of course, in the expression here, I could do something else, you know, not just clamp it like so in such a rigid way. Uh, you could do something that could just decrease it by, by some amount. Like uh, you can, you could take the amount that goes above the speed limit and you could uh, multiply this down by something, you know, just to get kind of a softer, um, software in there. Uh, but yeah, it obviously works. So it goes here fast and you see like everywhere it's fast and then um, just there on the sphere it's slow. So speed limiting works and I think it's a this is a very good way to set up your custom attributes uh, and to be able to to, to uh, do stuff from them like masking and so on. I think it's a, it's a good workflow nowadays smartly made in this uh, regard. Okay, thanks.